Hello out there, we're on the air, it's hockey night tonight. Tension grows, the whistle blows, and the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps and the players bump and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. The good old hockey game, it's the best game you can name. It's the best game you can name. It's the good old hockey game. Hey guys, sorry for that. Um, yeah, so I, I filmed this next video that I'm about to show you about the history of Lord Stanley's Cup at the same time that I did uh, the history of hockey and I did Stompin' Tom Connors um, hockey game song and I did those about three weeks ago. The reason why I did not uh, post that video at about the same time is because I just thought it was too much hockey all at once. So I'm doing it now. Hope you enjoy it. See ya. In 1888, Sir Frederick Arthur Stanley was appointed by Queen Victoria to be the Governor General of Canada. When he arrived in Canada, he watched his first hockey game, and it was between the Montreal Victorias and Montreal Amateur Athletic Association. Lord Stanley was hooked. I love that picture that they just showed, and uh, I did the history of hockey just recently, and th actually tonight, I filmed it tonight, um, but these are probably not going to get posted at the same time because the editing process takes a little while. Anyway, um, I just think that picture is so cool, and it just feels like such Canadiana to me, you know? He became Canada's highest-ranking hockey fan, and he got his whole family involved, too. His sons and daughters even took up the game of hockey themselves. In 1892, Lord Stanley decided to donate a trophy that would be awarded to the best hockey team in Canada each year. The trophy was made in the shape of a bowl, with engraving around its base and eventually on the bowl itself. Back then, Canada's official name was the Dominion of Canada, and the trophy was called the Dominion Hockey Challenge Cup. Soon, though, it became more widely known for its donor, and was referred to as the Stanley Cup. Lord Stanley never saw a Stanley Cup championship game and never got to present the cup in person. He returned to England in July of 1893, after his elder brother died, to succeed him as the 16th Earl of Derby. Lord Stanley himself died in 1908. The first recipient of the Stanley Cup was the Montreal Amateur Athletic Association in 1893, Team names were engraved on the base ring until it became full in 1903. From then until 1907, the winning team's names were inscribed on the bowl itself. In 1907, the Montreal Wanderers became the first to engrave the names of individual team members on the cup. Since 1924, it has been a tradition to engrave the names of players and other important team officials on the Stanley Cup. The addition of these names took up lots of space, and the cup had to grow taller to make everything fit. A new base ring was attached in 1909 by the Ottawa Senators, and many rings were added in subsequent years as the cup kept growing. If the bands weren't removed and replaced, the cup would look something like this nowadays. By the 1940s, with all of the base rings making it taller and taller, the Stanley Cup looked like a stovepipe. It was cumbersome and, well, ugly. The Stanley Cup as we know it today debuted in 1948 and was redesigned 10 years later. It's e Yeah, I learned all this at the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame. Actually, I'm so lucky because I went to a professional conference in Toronto and um, we rented out the Hall of Fame and had dinner there and had sp specialized tours and we had the Cup, I think, brought... I think it's usually in a display case, but it was brought out of the display case and put sort of center stage for us to look at, you know, without the glass in front of it. Trophy in all of sports. But why has it not grown in size in almost 70 years? Well, the five main bands the on the 1958 like Cup are movable and can be repositioned yeah. once they Solace. get full all the way around. The bottom main band of the Cup is the newest, and when it gets full, the top band is retired and placed in the Hockey Hall of Fame, and a new blank band is added at the bottom. All the other bands slide up a notch. 
Each band can hold 13 years of Stanley Cup champions. The Hockey Hall of Fame has a display of all of the retired bands and other parts of former Stanley Cup trophies. There are actually two copies of the Stanley Cup. The Presentation Cup is the one that is handed to the championship team each year and carried around the ice. That cup is the real deal and is often taken on the road for promotions and displays. And it is also loaned to each championship player for one day in the summer so they can celebrate (laughs) with the cup. When the Rangers won the cup in 94, uh, some of the Rangers had it and they would bring it around bars in New York City area. And uh, yeah, I wasn't there. I wasn't present, but I did see pictures. One of my best friends drinking champagne out of out of the cup. It's crazy that they actually have do a hometown that. parade or whatever they wish. With the dogs More about that later. Out of it. The other version of the Stanley Cup remains on permanent also, display in the Hockey Hall of Fame. But it's also really cool because you know you get to connect with the fans in a way that you don't with any other sports trophy that I that I know. Came in Toronto, and there is of course a third Stanley Cup, which is the original bull donated by Lawrence Stanley all those years ago. It remains at the Hockey Hall of Fame also. Mm -hmm. Although the two cups are identical in almost every respect, the Presentation Cup can be distinguished from the Replica Cup in one key way. When the 1984 Edmonton Oilers' names were being engraved on the cup, team owner Peter Pocklington, he's the guy closest to the cup in the picture with the beard, insisted that an extra name be added, that of his father, Basil. Well, Basil Pocklington had nothing at all to do with the Oilers, so when the NHL saw that the cup had his name on it, the league ordered that it be X'd out. The Presentation Cup has the Basil Pocklington X'd out name on it, while the Replica Cup is blank in that same location because the extra name was never put on in the first place. So So this is really interesting to me. So here's the picture of me standing in front of the cup, and uh, yes, because Islander fan, um, I was looking for I was looking for the Islander dynasty teams, which were you know the years just preceding the eighty three eighty four Oilers. In fact, you you beat us in that that was our fifth Stanley Cup attempt um, after having won four. And I did see this exact thing. I saw the X's out. I was like, I was literally right here looking at the cup, and I was wondering what the heck that was all about. And now I know. Very cool. And now I also realize that that proves to me that I did see the real cup and not the replica. Look for the 1984 Oilers about halfway up the cup if you ever get close to it. If you see the X'd out name, you're looking at the real presentation cup. The cup certainly has a colorful history. It's been lost, stolen, and simply left behind on several occasions. According to the Hockey Hall of Fame, (laughs) the Ottawa Silver Sevens team members drop-kicked the trophy into the Rideau Canal in 1905. It was found in the canal the following day. In 1907, (laughs) the Montreal... Probably after drinking a lot of, you know, out of the... Bowl of the cup. I Wanderers would left the cup with a photographer or who whatever. was living with his mother. She decided to plant flowers in it and actually kept <laughs> it for a few months until the team got it back. In 1924, the Montreal Canadiens were on their way to a party and had the cup with them when they got a flat tire. They stopped to change the tire, and when they left the scene, they accidentally left the cup behind in a snowbank. They realized later that night that they had left the cup abandoned and went back to look for it, Oopsie. and there it was. Even though the Stanley Cup has been synonymized with the annual NHL championship, the league does not actually own the trophy. The cup is awarded each year under an agreement with mm. the Stanley Cup trustees, which honors the original deal set by Lord Stanley. There are always two living trustees who serve until they pass away. When one dies, a replacement trustee is appointed to share the legal governance over the cup. As of this broadcast, the two... I guess that must have been around Remembrance Day. They have their poppies on. Um, Are they usually former hockey players or had been in the hockey industry? Trustees are Brian O'Neill, who is 88 years old and is a former NHL executive, and Ian Scotty Morrison, who is 87. 
That's Scotty Morrison on the left and Brian O'Neill on the right. The current Stanley Cup, topped with a copy of the original bowl, is made of a silver and nickel alloy. It's just under three feet tall, or less than one meter. It weighs 34 and a half pounds, or 15 and a half kilos. The cup has been won over 100 times by 18 active NHL teams, five defunct teams, and in its earliest days, nine different teams when it was the Challenge Cup. The Montreal Canadiens have won the cup a record 24 times and are the most recent Canadian-based team to win the cup in 1993. The Detroit Red Wings have won the cup 11 times, the most of any wow. United States-based NHL team, most recently I I in 2008. The smallest I municipality... I knew the Red Wings were a very winning team, but I didn't know they had that. ...to many. produce a Stanley Cup champion team is Kenora, Ontario. The town had a population of about 4,000 when the Kenora Thistles captured the cup in January 1907. The Art Ross Trophy, given to the player with the most points in a regular season in modern times, is named for a member of that Kenora team, who went Mm -hmm. on to a great career in hockey with the Montreal Wanderers and the old Ottawa Senators. Art Ross was the first rushing defenseman, and in this picture is in the first row on the far right. In 2005, during an NHL lockout, A movement was started to award the Stanley Cup anyway, maybe to the top amateur hockey team, as was originally intended by Lord Stanley. A website, freestanley.com, was set up to build interest in the idea. The movement actually made some headway. An agreement was signed that would allow the Cup to be awarded outside the league for any season in which the NHL did not operate. But by the time the agreement was finalized, the league was back in operation, so the 2005 year on the Cup says, season not played. Oh, that's a shame. That would have been so cool. Oh, too bad. What a missed opportunity to do something really, really special. The current rules on who gets to be engraved on the Cup are as follows. A player must have played at least half of the regular season games, which is 41, provided the player remains with the team when they win the cup or played in at least one game of the Stanley Cup final series. And since 1994, teams have been permitted to make a plea to the NHL commissioner to engrave a player's name on the cup if the player was unavailable to play due to extenuating circumstances. This happened as recently as 1998, when the Detroit Red Wings received special permission from the league to inscribe the name of Vladimir Konstantinov, whose career ended after a car accident the previous year, just after they had won the Cup. All through the 1997-98 season, the Detroit Red Wings considered Konstantinov a full member of their team, even though he never was able to play hockey again. With the Montreal Canadiens having won by far the most Cup championships of any team, The list of players who have been engraved on the cup is dominated by Montreal. Henri Richard has had his name engraved 11 times, having played on more Stanley Cup champions than any other player. He is followed by Jean Beliveau and Yvonne Cornoyer of the Canadiens with 10 championships. Claude Provo of the Canadiens has 9. Three players are tied with 8. Red Kelly, who won 4 with the Leafs and 4 with the Red Wings the most for any player who was not a member of the Canadiens, and Habs players Jacques Lemaire and Maurice Richard. Jean Beliveau's name appears on the Cup more than any other individual, ten times as a player and seven times as management, for a total of 17 times. Usually, when the Cup is awarded after the final game, it is handed to the team captain for the first skate around the ice. This has not always been the case, though, In 1993, when the Canadians won their last cup, team captain Guy Carboneau immediately handed the cup to Denis Savard, who was injured and unable to play in the team's final games. And in the 1998 Detroit win, captain Steve Iserman gave the cup to Vladimir Konstantinov, who was in a wheelchair. In 2001, another special moment happened with the cup. Ray Bork, one of the league's elite players, had been with the Boston Bruins for a long time, but the team had never won a Stanley Cup while he was with them. Near the end of his career, he was traded to Colorado, who had a good chance of winning another Cup that year. Sure enough, the Avalanche won, and Bork would finally get a chance to raise the Stanley Cup. Captain Joe Sackett gave Bork the honors. 
The Stanley Cup championship team is allotted the summer to pass around the cup. Their time with the trophy includes a team parade, time with sponsors, and a day with each player and member of the team's staff. The cup is always transported by a representative from the Hockey Hall of Fame. Before being so closely guarded, some funny incidents have happened with the cup, according to Wikipedia. During the 1940-41 season, the mortgage on Madison Square Garden was paid. The management publicly celebrated by burning the mortgage in the bowl of the cup. Some fans claim that this act <laughs> desecrated the cup, leading to the curse of 1940, yeah. which allegedly uh. caused the Rangers to wait 54 years for their next cup win. In 1962, the Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. During a party after the win, the trophy was dropped in a bonfire and badly damaged. It was repaired at the expense of the team. In 1964, Red Kelly of the Toronto Maple Leafs posed for a photo with his infant son sitting in the cup, only to find that the child had peed in it. A week after Detroit won the cup in 2008, Chris Draper's newborn daughter pooped in it as she sat in the bowl. <laughs> the New York Islanders Brian Trottier admitted to sleeping with the cup, as have apparently dozens of other players. <laughs> Brian Trottier. I love that guy. Oh, yeah, that's, that's my team. I see I, my jersey right now was a rare uh, few years where they had they went to navy blue uh, instead of the traditional lighter blue, which they're back to now, thankfully. Uh, I guess i got to update this jersey. After a parade in their honor in 1994, several New York Rangers took the cup to Belmont Park, filled it with oats, and let Kentucky Derby winner Gopher Gin eat out of the Stanley Cup. In 2003, <laughs> Martin Brodeur ate popcorn out of the cup, in 2006, Hurricanes goalie Cam Ward ate cereal out of the Stanley Cup Bowl. And Wikipedia says three players, the New York Islanders Clark Gillies, the Anaheim Ducks Sean O'Donnell, and the Pittsburgh Penguins Clark Nick Gillies. Bonino, have allowed their dogs to eat out of the cup. The Stanley Cup is like no other trophy in sports. It has been dreamed of by little kids for generations, and sometimes those little kids grow up to become NHL hockey players. Some play professional hockey for 20 years and never win the cup, while others play only a few games right out of the minor leagues and win the cup before they really have their first rookie season. It's part mm. of the magic of the NHL. Yeah, I, I agree. It's like no other uh, trophy in sports. In sports, It really is. And, and just the fact that, you know, the players get to bring it home and their kid poops in it or their dog eats out of it or cereal out of it or somebody drinks champagne out of it in a bar it's it's the it's, it's like it's got a connection to the fans that no other championship cup or trophy could ever have it just couldn't and uh it's amazing and i was so thankful to get to see it up close and in person up in toronto well thanks for the suggestion uh very worthwhile doing. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and I shall see you soon, my friends. Take care.